Air pollution is one of the most pressing public health challenges of our time, affecting nearly every corner of the globe. It's hard to ignore the hazy skies over cities or the smell of exhaust fumes during rush hour. But what's even harder to ignore is the toll air pollution takes on our lungs. From asthma to COPD and even lung cancer, the impact of air pollution on pulmonary health is both profound and far-reaching. This video dives into the relationship between exposure to air pollutants and the development of respiratory conditions, shedding light on how the air we breathe can shape our health in ways we might not even realize. So, drop a like on this video and watch until the end to learn more about this alarming topic. When we think of air pollution, we often picture smog-filled skies or industrial smokestacks. But the reality is much more complex. The air in urban areas is a dynamic mix of both natural and man-made pollutants including particulate matter, ozone, nitrogen oxides, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, and even lead. These pollutants come from a variety of sources such as vehicle emissions, power plants, industrial processes, and even household activities like cooking and heating. In developing countries, the use of biomass fuels like wood and coal for cooking and heating adds another layer of complexity, contributing significantly to indoor air pollution. Among these pollutants, particulate matter is one of the most harmful. These tiny particles, which are less than 2.5 micrometers in diameter, can penetrate deep into the lungs and even enter the bloodstream, causing a range of health problems. Ozone is another major pollutant that forms when sunlight reacts with nitrogen oxide and volatile organic compounds from vehicles and industrial sources. While ozone high up in the atmosphere protects us from the sun's ultraviolet rays, at ground level it's a harmful pollutant that can irritate the lungs and worsen respiratory conditions. Asthma is one of the most chronic respiratory conditions affecting millions of people worldwide. For those who suffer from it, asthma can be a daily struggle with symptoms like wheezing, coughing, and shortness of breath making even simple activities challenging. While genetics and allergies play a role in asthma development, air pollution is increasingly recognized as a major trigger and even a potential cause of the disease. Research has shown that exposure to air pollutants like particulate matter, ozone, and nitrogen dioxide can exacerbate asthma symptoms and lead to more frequent hospitalizations. For example, one study found that short-term exposure to ozone was significantly associated with increased hospital admissions for asthma in children. Another study demonstrated that long-term exposure to traffic-related air pollution containing particulate matter was linked to an increased incidence of asthma in children up to the age of 12. This is particularly concerning because children are more vulnerable to the effects of air pollution due to their developing respiratory systems and higher breathing rates relative to their body size. But it's not just children who are at risk. Adults are also affected with studies showing that long-term exposure to air pollution can increase the risk of developing asthma later in life. For instance, a study found that exposure to particulate matter was associated with an increased risk of asthma in adult women. Similarly, a large European study involving over 23,000 adults found that long-term exposure to traffic-related air pollution was linked to a higher incidence of asthma in adults. These findings highlight the pervasive impact of air pollution on respiratory health across all age groups. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, is a progressive lung disease that makes it difficult to breathe. While smoking is the most well-known cause of COPD, air pollution is emerging as a significant risk factor, especially in non-smokers. In fact, one study estimated that the prevalence of COPD among non-smokers ranges from 1.1% to 40% in different countries, with indoor air pollution from biomass combustion and secondhand smoke being major contributors. Outdoor air pollution also plays a role in the development and progression of COPD. A meta-analysis found that outdoor air pollution was associated with an increase in both the incidence and prevalence of COPD. This is particularly concerning for people living in densely populated urban areas where air pollution levels are often high. The elderly are especially vulnerable to the effects of air pollution on COPD. As we age, our lungs become less efficient at clearing particles, making us more susceptible to inflammation and respiratory complications. This is why improving air quality is so important, especially for older adults who may already be dealing with other health issues. One study demonstrated that reducing indoor air pollution from biomass fuels led to a decrease in COPD incidence, underscoring the importance of addressing both indoor and outdoor air quality. 
Lung cancer is one of the deadliest form of cancer, and while smoking is the leading cause, air pollution is increasingly being recognized as a significant risk factor. The International Agency for Research on Cancer classified outdoor air pollution and particulate matter as Group 1 human carcinogens, meaning there is sufficient evidence to show that they can cause cancer in humans. Studies have shown that long-term exposure to air pollutants is associated with an increased risk of lung cancer even after adjusting for smoking. For example, a meta-analysis found that ambient exposure to nitrogen oxides from vehicle emissions significantly increased the risk of lung cancer. These findings are particularly alarming given the widespread presence of these pollutants in urban environments. What's even more concerning is that air pollution doesn't just increase the risk of lung cancer, it can also affect the type of cancer that develops. A case control study from Canada found that exposure to a mixture of particulate matter and nitrogen dioxide was associated with a higher risk of adenocarcinoma, a specific type of lung cancer. This suggests that air pollution may not only increase the likelihood of developing lung cancer, but also influence its progression and severity. While much of the focus on air pollution's health effects centers on chronic conditions like asthma, COPD, and lung cancer, it's important not to overlook its impact on respiratory infections. Short-term exposure to air pollution can exacerbate symptoms of respiratory infections and increase the frequency of emergency room visits, particularly in vulnerable populations like children and the elderly. Two epidemiological studies found that short-term exposure to traffic-related particulate matter and ozone was associated with increased respiratory infection symptoms and higher rates of emergency department visits among children. This is likely because air pollution can weaken the immune system and make the lungs more susceptible to infections. For children whose immune systems are still developing, this can be especially dangerous. The elderly are also at risk as age-related declines in lung function and immune response make them more vulnerable to the effects of air pollution. This is why improving air quality is so important, not just for preventing chronic diseases, but also for reducing the burden of respiratory infections on healthcare systems. The impact of air pollution on pulmonary health is not just a local or regional issue. It's a global challenge that requires coordinated action. While developed countries have made significant strides in reducing air pollution through regulations and technological advancements, developing countries often lack the resources to address the problem effectively. This is particularly concerning given the high levels of indoor air pollution in many developing countries, where biomass fuels are commonly used for cooking and heating. Climate change further complicates the issue, as rising temperatures can increase the formation of ground-level ozone and exacerbate air pollution levels. This means that efforts to combat air pollution must go hand-in-hand -hand with efforts to mitigate climate change, creating a dual challenge for policymakers and public health officials. Addressing the impact of air pollution on pulmonary health requires a multifaceted approach. On a policy level, governments must implement and enforce stricter air quality standards, invest in clean energy technologies, and promote sustainable transportation options. Industries must also play their part by adopting cleaner production methods and reducing emissions. On an individual level, there are steps we can all take to reduce our exposure to air pollution. This might include using air purifiers at home, avoiding outdoor activities during times of high pollution, and supporting policies and initiatives that aim to improve air quality. For those living in areas with high levels of indoor air pollution, switching to cleaner cooking and heating methods can make a significant difference. But as you can see, the impact of air pollution on pulmonary health is undeniable. From asthma and COPD to lung cancer and respiratory infections, the air we breathe has a profound effect on our lungs and overall well-being. While the challenge of reducing air pollution is daunting, it's not insurmountable. By working together, governments, industries, and individuals, we can create a cleaner, healthier future for ourselves and generations to come. After all, the air we breathe is something we all share, and protecting it is a responsibility we all must bear. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you will enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Have a nice day and thanks for watching.